me show you why hundreds of motor vehicle traders prefer to use motor traders assistance software. When MTA opens, it will display a list of vehicles currently held in stock, like the one here. It's possible to change the order of each of these columns, which is very useful and also you can instantly see the number of days each vehicle has been in stock. You can also include other columns if you wish, including the selling price and the SRV, which you probably know means standard value. And the most useful column, I think, is the costs. X VAT, because this tells you how much has been invested in the vehicle and helps a dealer to decide how much the selling price should be. If you click on the X stop button, you will be able to see a list of all the vehicles that you've ever sold. It's very easy to search for a registration number or a stock number should the needs ever arise when you want to know something about a particular sale. If you go to the menu and select add a vehicle to stock, you will see this window. At first, it does look a bit busy, but many of these fields are filled in automatically for you after you enter the vehicle registration number. All you need then, basically, is a supplier's details. The mileage can be put in later, just before delivery, as can be the selling price. By the way, some dealers ask one price for retail and another price for trade. That's why we have two boxings for the price. But if all your customers are retail, for example, then you can forget about entering the trade price and vice versa. And you will need to enter an SIV. Basically, that's it. Vehicles are set for the VAT margin scheme by default. But if it is a VAT qualifying vehicle, there's a facility for that. All prices anywhere on MTA are always including VAT. MTA will calculate your VAT liabilities for you. So let's put a vehicle into stock. It's very quick and easy. MTA has a lot of validation included and this helps to prevent errors. So now if you try to raise a sales invoice on the purchase invoice as it stands now, you will get a prompt reminding you to enter a selling price. You won't be able to raise a sales invoice until this is done. Before raising any sales invoice, several features will be checked automatically to avoid errors. For example, the default date or well, the date of first registration when you put in a car into stock is always set today. So if you forget to put the correct value, the MTA will remind you that it's unlikely that the date of first registration is today. But if it is, then you can go ahead with raising the sales invoice. You'll also be prompted to enter a mileage if this is not done already. Before moving on to raising a sales invoice, I would like to point out what all these little green question marks are. If you click on any one of them, you will get a help window, which is relevant to the box or the button, whatever is next to it. So, for example, if you're not sure what SIV means or whether a vehicle is VAT qualifying or not, then just click on the green question mark box next to those items and you'll get a full explanation. As well as the green question marks, there's usually a relevant tip or two in the status bar at the bottom of each MTA window. MTA has been designed for inexperienced users to just dive straight in and trust MTA to help them out enter the details correctly. No one likes reading manuals, do they? Well, there is a quick start guide available from the menu bar if you want to see this. A sales invoice can now be raised for this in-stock item. I should mention at this point that all the data contained in this video isn't real and everything is fictitious just to help with the demonstration. OK, so now we click on this button and a new window appears. This sales invoice window uh, can be split into sections. The top section has the details of the sold vehicle. And then the middle section is for the part exchange vehicle and remains greyed out until you enter a value for a part exchange. You can have more than one part exchange actually, but I'm keeping this video 
simple and short. Um, you'll always need to add a purchaser in the purchaser details, um, but you don't have to enter every detail of the purchaser. You can just put a name in if you like. But if you want to put other stuff like telephone number, address, email, you can. And finally, the bottom section relates to the finance, which will also be grayed out until you select that a vehicle is on finance. Okay, so let's let's have a look at the sales invoice. Okay, so I've entered some details into this form. I've put the deposit paid of two hundred pounds, a thousand pounds part exchange allowance. Uh, I put the salesman's name in, which is you don't have to. You might want to keep a track of the location or the person. You can put it there. If you've got more than one garage, you know, you can put the other garage in. I've filled out the part exchange. Um, we've got a purchaser called Fred Jones, who don't exist, but I'll just put his address in as well, which doesn't exist. And I've selected a finance company called First Stop Finance. There's also a warranty there, which you can see from the drop-down list is 24 months with customer protect. So we've got a loan amount, we've got an agreement reference. I think we're ready to click finished and have a look at the printed sales invoice. Because there was a part exchange on this vehicle, um, after you finished, or click the finish button on the last window, um, you'll be presented with another window which shows all the details of the new item that's come into stock as a purchase invoice. So that's automatic. And then after that's checked and cleared, this window appears. Um, obviously, I can't get it all in this window, but there's the top half. Um, you can have your logo on there if you wish. Um, just let us know if you're a user uh, and we'll get your company logo from you and then we'll put it at the top. Notice that because the vehicle was on finance, the uh, invoice two shows the finance company and the customer is listed under the deliver to. The lower half of the invoice is obviously self-explanatory, but notice that it does contain the statutory requirements for a seller's and a buyer's certificate. It is possible to export this uh, report or sales invoice to a variety of formats such as um, Excel or CSV. Most people use PDF Acrobat, um, which can be then attached to an email. Now we come to the cash book, which is really the engine of the whole programme. Now, if you were highlighting stock number 840 in either in stock or X stock, and then switch to cash book invoices, you will see all the items that relate only to stock number 840. And in this case, this is the item we've just raised an invoice for. Some of the items are in red and some, or one in any way, is in black. When they're paid, they turn black. And if they're not paid, or rather the balance is not zero, they're now shown in red. And as you can see, for stock number 840, there's an item automatically posted for the deposit for 200. There's the finance for 500 automatically put in. The warranty purchase, which is uh, 28224. And the warranty sale, which is 300. So you've got the purchase and the sale of the warranty. And now outstanding on the rest to Fred Jones is 3,300. So these now need to be paid or if you want to pay them, you can do it now. Notice by the way that uh, you can search on a variety of parameters, in this case by stock number and by stock number 840. But you can further drill down into looking at dates, categories, reference, description, contacts. So you can look at your data in all sorts of ways very easily by selecting the appropriate tick box and then the appropriate criteria. 
So let's pay off one of the outstanding invoices that's shown in red. Let's take the top one for the deposit. If we double click on the deposit item, this window will appear, edit invoice or credit note. Most of this is in grey, which means it's uh, set automatically and you cannot change it. Well, you could if you deleted this invoice and then recreated it in a different way, but it's fairly good that it does it automatically because we're trying to save time and effort. And you'll see a button there called enter a new payment. So if you click on that, it will take by default the full amount. You will see on the enter a new payment that the date is set to today's date. The balance outstanding is for the full amount. It's up to you what payment reference you want to put in and all the methods of payment are available to be selected from the row there called check, cash, direct debit, etc. The full amount being paid and paid by Fred Jones. Now this is a guess by the system. You can change this, but usually nine times out of 100, 99 times out of 100, um, it will be correct. And all you need to do is to click the finished box. After entering the payment for the full amount, you'll be returned to this window and you can see it's marked, this invoice is paid. Job done, click finished, and you'll be taken to the first window. You can see now that the deposit paid is shown in black and the other entries which are yet to be paid are still in red. It's handy to see which items in your cash book have yet to, are yet to be paid. Well, we've shown you how to enter a car into stock, how to raise a sales invoice, and how the cash book can be used to pay off the items relating to a particular sales invoice. Of course, there are many, many more aspects to this program, and the video would be incredibly long if, were, if I were to cover it all. But I think we should just show the reports section, which gives you an idea of some of the reports that are available within NTA. When you click on VAT report, it asks you for the start date and the end date that you're interested in. It doesn't have to be three months. In this case, it's from today going back three months. So you can see when I made the video. Anyway, it's done in uh, categories. So domestic cash book items in this particular case comes first and then it goes through all of the cash book items and then at the end you've got the nine boxes which you can then see that'll go up to HMRC. When you close the window with the nine values for VAT you'll be confronted, if that's the word, with this box important notice which basically says don't make any false declarations or fiddle your VAT. If you click yes, it will take you to a web browser where you'll be taken through the process of submitting your VAT via the Make Tax Digital Scheme. There, that's it. That's your VAT done. Well, that was a very quick overview of how MTA works. You've seen how to the vehicle into stock, how to raise a sales invoice for a vehicle, how to get a VAT report, how the cash book synchronises with your stock. Of course, you don't have to synchronise everything. You, if you want to put an electricity bill in or something not related to a vehicle, then you just create a cash book invoice, as you've seen, and show it paid, as you've also seen. So the cash book's very easy to use, and there are very many ways you can filter stuff to look at the different views. The other thing I haven't mentioned is your data will be safe. This is because each time the program closes, a full backup is sent to our server. It was also kept on your machine, so you've got two places at least. Um, and you can restore from the data on our server from the last time you logged on or logged off, or from last Wednesday or last month, you choose. So your data is very easy to restore from. There are no charges for more than one user, so multiple users are catered for, no charge. You're unlimited 
free DVLA and postcode lookups. Uh, very easy to use this program for people who are neither computer experts or trained bookkeepers. The margins on each car before or after sale can be instantly seen and textually explained so that you can understand how that margin was arrived at and you can check it. It will always be right, if you put it in right, of course. Um, there's automatically synchronisation between vehicle stock and the cash book, as you've seen. Um, sale or return I have not covered, but uh, it does cater for sale or return vehicles and it will print out contracts of various types. And don't forget there's telephone support, 9 till 5, Monday to Friday, we'll answer as soon as we can. And uh, outside of these hours, send us an email because we monitor them all the time. We always reply the same day, even on bank holidays, because we know when you're stuck, you need us quick. There's no charge for accountants, so you can offer your accountant to download and use this program without any restrictions. He can get your data imported and sort things out for you, do a trial balance or whatever. Uh, and there's no charge, did I say? And also your accountant can use the telephone helpline. We don't mind. We welcome accountants. Many, many accountants have our system already. Well, that concludes the uh, demonstration. I hope uh, you get a better grasp. And thank you very much for looking and your interest. Bye.